without further ado, James. Give it up. God is good, amen? Wow. Uh, Deb, thank you for leading worship and, and the team. That was just beautiful. Brought back so many good memories. I, I was a member of this church from... Uh, Dave, help me out. My first service here was your last service in the old building. I think that was 2008-ish, 10, 10, 2010, okay. All right, so 2010 to 2016, I was here. And this church has just been amazing. Pastor Randy is a wonderful friend, um, always encouraged me just to go after God. He never tried to fit me into a mold. He always wanted to know, uh, James, what's the Holy Spirit doing in your life, and how can I support that? And you guys have done that faithfully. You are our very first financial supporters, and you, you've given to us faithfully for the last decade. So, church, thank you so much for everything that you've done. God is so, so good. So what I want to do today, uh, I just want to share a, lit a little bit about what God's doing in the ministry. If you want some details on that, I was here in late January, and I think you can go back in your archives and check that out. But I had a dear friend of mine, he put together a, a professional grade video for us, and uh, it really captured what we do. So I want to share that. Got a, a few recent testimonies and some pictures that I want to share uh, to show you, and then I want to preach a little bit. Today is Pentecost Sunday. Did you guys know that? And we are Pentecostal, amen? Amen. I, and I was working on a message, and, and the Lord does this a lot with me, and uh, I was wanting to preach on offense because we, we're experiencing that a lot down with the homeless and within our ministry, and I started working on that, and he said, no, I just want you to preach the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So that's what we're going to go after today, and if you've been seeking that, I, I just feel in my spirit that the Lord, today is your day. He wants to fill this place with his spirit and with fire. Amen? Amen. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this church, Jesus. We just thank you. you as Dave said, you birthed our ministry right there in that spot. I remember where it was. God, when you call me to, to begin to love the homeless, thank you, Jesus, first and foremost. God, thank you for this church. Thank you for how faithful they have been for so many years. God, we just thank you for anointed worship here in this sanctuary. God, I just ask for more. Just increase in this church. God, thank you for everything that they are doing. And God, we ask that you send your spirit to baptize us with fire here in this place today. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. amen. So if you got that video queued up, if you got that ready to go, that would be fantastic. So how did Urban Outreach get here? Uh, I guess the best way to answer that is Jesus. We started in 2009 with just a bag of clothes in a park. We were homeless as a homeless ministry for the first seven years. Uh, but thankfully, we, we partnered with the Lord's Gym in 2016. Our friends who have been hurt sometimes in churches before could come, could work out, could hear the Word of God, and just feel the love of God in practical ways. We have a medical respite program. We started partnering with the Welcome House to run sheltering projects. I think we're on our 15th shelter now, and we put just a, a little kiosk in my back office. I think we hired 30 people our first year. Well, that grew and that grew and that grew up to last year. We hired over 5,000 people out of our, our little office here in Covington. It feels good here. We're just family. We hang out, we play cards, we, we study the Bible together. When somebody needs something and we have it, we give it to them. It's just a place to come to, to feel the love of Christ. I was not the Good Samaritan. I still loved God, but I still didn't want to deal with other people's problems. Being here at the gym and working with people and having the heart of Christ, I get to not just work with them, but I get to be their family. During women's hours, anything that you struggle with, habits, hang-ups, 
any kind of abuse, any kind of addiction. We make Jesus the center of that, and then we just let him do the work. Youth Boxing Program, I had a heart for the kids. It's not just the boxing itself, but it's, it's to help these kids become productive. Uh, respectful to learn about God, but really to learn about themselves and what they can do with their energy. I think it could be a platform for a ministry for them just as well as it is for me or anybody else. I get to help other people's kids get cut out of generational crap that has been they've been buried with. We get to do life together every day. I've watched them have babies. I've been to funerals with them. I've took their last words before they passed away. It's more than just being a pastor. It is literally being a family member. I've been boxing since 2018. I'm not the most social guy in the world. <laughs> Punch people. But um, this is my family, and these are people that I do love. I did three years in prison just about, and um, this is my saving grace. They don't charge us anything, basically, to come in here and make the most of ourselves, and we have constant reminders of how good Jesus is. I have met some people, like I said, Pastor James, that have put my life on a different trajectory, and that have opened my eyes and allowed me to put my pride aside as a man, as the most powerful man. I'm doing the work not for me, I'm doing the work for the Lord. It's the Lord's gym. All those over there, there's going to be more to them. One night we were handing out sandwiches and some woman asked me if I had a dresser. And immediately the Lord like dropped it in me that get that dresser and it's taken off from there. The exciting thing about it is I'm in a lot of homes and I pray with a whole lot of people. Some people hand out sandwiches, I hand out couches. They know that it's all about Jesus Christ. I come to a lot of places, but this is the only place that ever makes me feel welcome. I've been coming to the Lord's Gym since before it was in a building, but it's got me through many deaths, many struggles. I have a community around me. Uh, we do a lot of positive things. I probably would be in the grave without this place. So. I like the fellowship and the prayer, and uh, so I would say the Lord just blessed this place continually. Come and see, taste the spirit. Taste it, because it's so sweet, <laughs> and it's so powerful. And we even got a baptism here, where we can baptize. Isn't that good? He did a nice job on that, I thought. Um, that's what we get to do every day. It's just an honor and a privilege. So we are open 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday. So it's, we're, we're church with a boxing gym and a food pantry, and we do showers, and we do laundry. We deliver furniture. We do jobs. We have shelters. God's just been good, and it, it all started right here back in 2009, 2010, um, just with a word from the Lord. And, and somebody from the church gave me a, a bag of clothes, and we, we went down into a park in Covington, and it's it's just grown to what you've seen. He's just been so faithful. He's, he's so good. Amen? Amen. So I want to share a couple pictures. Uh, if you just want to go in order, start with one. This is my friend Virgil Stewart. Uh, Virgil was murdered two blocks from our gym two summers ago. He's, uh, Virgil's a vet, 10 years sober, and he was a staple in the gym every single day. He was a good friend of mine. And what he would do, he would just seek out other homeless vets and bring them to us for us to, to try to get them housed. And uh, he was murdered for $6 in his pocket right by the gym, $6. Next slide. 
in the very top left, I'm doing Virgil's funeral, and that's his grandson, Jaden. Virgil works so hard to take care of his nine grandchildren because his daughter it was an addict. So we, we kind of started working with Jaden. We helped him get beds and clothes and, and all of that. And then I, I started, in a sense, mentoring him. And about six months ago, I took him to church and just hung out in kids' club in our church with him. And next slide. Then his sisters were like, well, you're taking Jaden to church. Will you take me to church? I was like, yeah, I'll take you. And that's his mom. That's Charlotte in the back. And like I said, she was an addict. But as of now, she is six months sober. God is good. Next slide. So I got to baptize Avery. Next slide. Cassidy. Next slide. And Charlotte just two weeks ago. So the really cool thing, and, and you know the scripture, Romans 8, 28, he makes all things work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purposes. I got saved at a funeral. I know that if you love God, even in the midst of funerals, he's going to make good come from it. Amen. All right, next slide. This one's just fun. All right, so last Thursday, we have a new corporate sponsor, Newman Tractor. They're pretty large international equipment sales, and, and they do a lot of stuff for us. Last Thursday, they had me out to talk to their employees and just share what the Lord is doing in the ministry. And I did that, and afterwards, I said, hey, can I drive one of those big trucks? So they let me, 50-ton dump truck, that thing is massive. So I got in it, and I got to drive that around. That was really cool. Next slide. This is Tom and Susie, if you see Tom. Tom is 80 years old. Let me encourage you if you're a little bit older. Susie, I think, is 76. Tom kind of robbed the cradle, husband and wife there. Tom and Susie run the breakfast ministry of Covington. So they cook breakfast for hundreds of our homeless folks every weekday morning. Two months ago, Tom came to see me. He said, hey, they're selling the church where we serve out of, do you have any idea where we could serve breakfast? I was like, yeah, Tom, you could serve right here in the gym. So we started that. Uh, we were seeing 80 to 90 people every day, and Tom started two weeks ago, and it bumped our attendance. We're seeing 150 homeless folks every single weekday. Tom and Susie cook homemade breakfast for them, and we get to pray for them. We get to lead a devotional. And we have a whole new crew of people that have never heard the gospel before, which is fantastic. And next slide. Is there another one? Yeah, we relaunched outreach. So these are our leaders. Everybody's got tattoos and crazy looking hair and all of that fun stuff. You heard from our women's director, Emily. She's in there uh, playing the drums. And the, our, our, our altar is a boxing ring, which is really cool. So Emily leads our women's time from one to four, and she's also the director of our youth boxing. You saw Ruben in the video. Um, he emptied an entire car lot of their inventory and spent three years in prison as a result. And he came, heard that we had a boxing ring, wanted to get in, involved with that. And he is a tri-state Golden Gloves champion now. We got to lead him to Christ. We got to baptize him. And now he works with our youth and helps them out, which is fantastic. Tomorrow morning, uh, the lady with the purple hair, Felicia, I get to hire her. She's going to start working for us. Emily completed her certified level with the Assemblies of God. I got to be her mentor. And Felicia on the left, she just finished her first course. So she's going to be part of her staff. And right there in the middle, that's her husband, Adam. So he's a, a Marine and into martial arts. Just, just a good person to have around down in the middle of the hood. Amen? So next slide. We started outreach last month, and uh, we hadn't had an official outreach service since COVID, just for obvious reasons, and it was time to do it. So we had seating for 75 people, and our launch service was standing room only with over 100 just our, our very first one. So we are in the market for a larger space and a larger building, and that's kind of what we're looking at. But God has been amazing. He's just blessed our socks off, and we are so thankful for everything that you as a church do to support us. Amen? 
All right, so we need to be done by noon. Is that right, Dave? Ish, heavy on the ish. <laughs> I, I better talk fast. Okay, I'm a rule follower, so I always try to hit that mark. 1215-ish, and uh, apparently I get to be involved in a water baptism today, which is really, really cool. All right, let's pray real quick. Father, just send your, your spirit down. Baptize us with fire. Come and have your way in our hearts. I thank you for this church and your people. God, do what only you could do. Thank you just for the beautiful, wonderful worship here in this place, and we ask, God, that you help us, Lord, You baptize us with fire. Give us the power that we need to witness. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. Acts 1.8, here's your key scripture for today. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. I want to call your attention to the word power there. There are two different words sometimes that are rendered that. This one is dunamis. It's where we get the word dynamite from. Oftentimes, exousia is the other one. It means authority, but also sometimes rendered power. So if I am a police officer, my dunamis is my sidearm, and my exousia is my badge. The Holy Spirit gives us the power to change things, amen, and Jesus Christ gives us the authority to act on his behalf. So we got our hands on that. Everybody understand where we're going? Okay. So he gives us power when the Holy Spirit comes upon us, and we will be his witnesses. Witnesses there in the Greek is martus. It's where we get our word for martyr. It literally means to believe in something so strongly that you are willing to die for it. Church persecution is coming. I don't know if you see it. We're not quite to that level, at least in this country. But you need to get your mind made up right now. Are you willing to die for Jesus? Period. Point blank. You saw a lot of really cool things up there on the screen. Uh, We have a lot of issues, too. I've been assaulted a number of times, once pretty seriously. Uh, Just last week, I had to exit a gentleman. He threatened Emily, our women's director, put his his fingers in the temple of one of our mental health patients and said, I'm going to put you to sleep. And we simply can't have that. So it's uh, it's not always easy, but you need to get it settled in your mind right now. What are you willing to do for Jesus? So we need the baptism in the Holy Spirit so we have that power to witness. Pastor Randy came down in 2020, and we had just reopened after COVID, and he was so excited that the ministry was just ramping up. There weren't a ton of people in there. And he said, man, the Lord gave me these five questions to ask to get people baptized in the Holy Spirit. I was like, man, that's awesome. Why don't you share that with me? We kind of struggle with it. And he took me through them, and there was a lady there. Her name is Wanda. Wanda's a prostitute. She's a drug addict. She was being raped. As she was being raped, she shot the man in the chest and killed him. She was accused of murder until that got overturned after she spent about a year and a half in prison. And she'd been just up and down and up and down. Obviously, with that much trauma, it's understandable, right? I said, well, Pastor Randy, you got these five questions. Why don't you see if it'll work on Wanda? And he did. And it did. I was like, wow, okay, so if you can just lead somebody in the baptism of the Holy Spirit like that, it's got to work for other people because he is no respecter of persons, right? So the questions, and I don't know if he's adapted those or, or whatever to your prayer stations or not, but it says, have you been saved? One. Have you been water baptized? Two. Who do you need to forgive? Ouch. And do you believe that baptism in the Holy Spirit is biblical? And five, do you have faith to receive it right now? So let's just talk about those five questions briefly, and then I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to demonstrate it through the prayer stations, if that works. All right, one, have you been saved? Hopefully you all know this. Hopefully everybody in here is, but very briefly, Romans 3.23, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Sin there in the Greek is the word hamartia. It means to shoot and miss the mark. We are all sinners. I hear this all the time. People ask the question, why do bad things happen to good people? That's the wrong question. There are no good people. 
we're all sinners, right? And if you get your mind around that, the entitlement just goes away. All have sinned and fallen short of God's glorious standards. And you have Romans 6, 23, the wages, what we earn. You go to work. You get a paycheck. All right, your paycheck is what you earn for your work. Your paycheck for your sin is death. Wages of sin is death. That's not just physical death, but that's eternal separation from Jesus for eternity, eternal torment in hell. But there's a but. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Hmm. A lot of people ask me, well, why does God send people to hell? God doesn't send people to hell. We choose it when we reject his son, our Savior. If you are drowning and somebody throws you a life raft and you refuse to grab it and you drown, that's on you. God made a way. He came down. He wrapped himself in flesh and died the death you and I deserve. And if we simply believe that and confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, we shall be saved. Lord there in the Greek is kurios. It means owner. Everybody wants the Savior. Not everybody wants the owner. That's cafeteria Christianity. Yeah, I like that grace. I like that mercy. I like that eternal life. Obedience? <laughs> Fasting? <laughs> Suffering? He's our owner. We were bought with a price. So we are saved at the point of our confession when it's real, all right? We are being saved as we get sanctified, and we will be saved when we become glorified. At the point of confession, when you honestly, earnestly mean that, Jesus, you are my Lord and Savior. I admit that I am a sinner. I believe you died for my sins, and I confess that you are my Lord forever. At that point, you are saved from the penalty of sin. As you follow him through sanctification, you are being saved by the power of sin. It would be nice if it was a straight line, right? Sometimes it's some of that. All right? And then you will be saved when you die in Christ or he comes back and you are abiding in him. So you are, you are saved, you're being saved, and you will be saved. Everybody with me? All right. First station. Next station, and we get to demonstrate this today. Have you been water baptized? Matthew 28, 19. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. First things first, we are to make disciples, not just converts. I think it was about 10 years ago, we rented out Sawyer Point. We had a three-day outreach. It was awesome. 200 people signed prayer cards saying that they made a confession for Christ. We had semi-trailers of clothes and all this stuff. It was really cool. And we had a leadership meeting. We were right back there in the, in the youth center, and we were going around as leaders, well, what's the Lord doing in your ministry? And it's, it still had a lot of pride in me at the time. I was like, oh, 200 people got saved at our outreach. Dun, 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 dun. Pastor Darwin Tibbs looks me dead in the eye. He said, well, how are you discipling them? I said, well, what do you mean? 200 people got saved. Yeah. He said, well, you, you caught 200 fish, but you left them on the bank to rot. And that stung, but I needed to hear that. And shortly after that, we began our daily prayer and our daily Bible studies, and it's been amazing. We've been through the New Testament, a chapter. We do a chapter a day every morning from 9 to 10 a.m. in the New Testament. We're on our third go-round of the New Testament and a year and a half ago, we started the Old Testament. We're about to finish Second Chronicles. You should see a bunch of uh, recovering addicts and homeless guys try to pronounce all those names. <laughs> they do it, though. It's, it's, really, it's really good. And then on Fridays, we do Beat the Pastor Bible Trivia. And they usually beat us, which is really kind of fun, too. But it's water baptism. Water baptism is a public confession of faith. It's putting on your wedding ring. After being married, it's being proud of who you are married to. It's an outward testimony of an inward change. It's dying to sin and being raised to new life in Christ. And we're going to do that here in about 20 minutes, which is fantastic. All right, there's this guy, Nicander. He's a Greek poet. We found his recipe um, from 400 B.C., his recipe for making pickles. You guys know how to make a pickle? You take a cucumber... 
right? And you baptizo, that's the Greek word, you baptizo it in boiling vinegar, and then it comes out a pickle. The cool thing, that pickle can never go back to being a cucumber. And every time we baptize somebody down in the hood at our place, we say, hey, you want to get pickled? And it's a little bit different than what they're used to, so it's kind of a running joke. All right, water baptism. Who do you need to forgive? Third question. You need to put God, your parents, and yourself in there. Ephesians 4.32, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Do you know the very next verse after the Lord's Prayer? Matthew 6.15, but if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive you of your sins. Holding bitterness or unforgiveness in your heart towards somebody else is like drinking poison and hoping that they die. It makes no sense. It locks you in a cage. So I encourage you, church, do what you have to do. It's an act of your will. Father, forgive them. I know what a sinner I am. I know what's in my heart. I know what they did to me. I'm not dismissing it. I'm not discounting it but I forgive them and I release them to you for your mercy and your grace. Every time I do a wedding, I, I, I give the bride and a groom uh, a dictionary. And during the ceremony, I'll rip out the page that says divorce. So this is not for you. You are going to have trouble. You are going to have problems. All right. You need to learn to work through them and forgive one another. Hmm. So I got pretty decent about forgiving other people, I'm not so good about forgiving myself. Does that speak to anybody in here? I believe that God forgives me, but if I believe God forgives me and I can't forgive myself, I'm putting myself in a position above God, and that becomes pride. So that really helped me learn to be able to forgive myself, and I think that's a message here for somebody today. Amen? Amen. All right. Have you been saved? Have you been water baptized? Who do you need to forgive? Fourth, do you believe the baptism in the Holy Spirit is biblical? Do you believe it, church? Luke eleven thirteen. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. Shortly after, later on in Luke, I am going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Jesus promised it would happen. He promised he would send it if we would ask. Are you asking, church? Do you want the power to witness? So the final question, number five, do you have the faith to receive it right now? Well, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So in the book of Acts, it happens five times. I'll share two of them. Acts 8, 14 through 17. When the apostles sent ones in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John there. When they arrived, they prayed for the new believers. All right, they were already believers there that they might receive the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit had not yet come upon any of them. They had simply been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John placed their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Acts 10, 44 through 46. While Peter was still speaking these words, Lord, do it now. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message, the circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. So my testimony, I told you I was saved at a, a, a funeral service, October 2nd, 2005. I was an atheist. I was 30 years old, and I heard the Lord's voice. 
in the middle of that funeral service. I was sitting behind my mother, and she was grieving her brother's loss, and I literally heard, put your right hand on your mother. What is that? Who is that? I never heard God before. I heard it again. I was just kind of scared, and I did. And instantly, I felt all of her pain wash away. Right? And I had read the Bible as an atheist because I wanted to be able to dispute it and debate it better with my employees and all of that divine setup, right? So shortly after, three nights later, I prayed in my mom's living room right there, and I was saved. God is good. Praise the Lord. I had no Christian friends. I knew you were supposed to go to church, but I didn't know how to act. I didn't know what to do. So very little Christian growth my first two years. Uh, my first time back after getting saved uh, at my parents' home in Charleston, West Virginia, was Christmas. And that Christmas just happened to be on a Sunday. So I got water baptized in their church on Christmas Day, which was super cool. And I was 30, and there was water from the Jordan involved. And so, hey, that was really awesome. Shortly after, I'm a, at the time, I'm still in the secular world, I am a timeshare sales manager. And I'm in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. So I'm the guy, when you said no, I'm the guy that had about 60 seconds to get your 10 grand out of you. I'm not proud of it, but I was pretty good at it. All right, so one Wednesday night, and I'm a relatively new Christian and not a whole lot of growth, uh, one of my employees sells a, a timeshare piece of real estate to an international deliverance minister. How about that? In timeshare, Gatlinburg, Tennessee. And he said, hey, it's Wednesday night. I've got to go do the youth service. You're the closing manager. Can you babysit my couple? You're going to love this guy. I said, yeah, absolutely. So he goes, and, and I just listened to all of these stories and this guy casting out demons and all these miracles and all of this stuff. I was like, what? This stuff is real. Let's go. So he goes in. He signs the paperwork. And as he's leaving, he said, so, James, what have you been praying for? I said, well. I don't even really know what it's for, but I'm like my one Christian friend, he knows how to speak in tongues, and he's a lot holier than I am. I want to be able to do that. And he said, well, stand up. I'm in my suit. We're on the sales floor, right? This, we're in the middle of a second. I said, man, I just sold you timeshare. What do you mean stand? He said, shut your mouth and stand up. And he laid his hands on me, and just like that, baptized in the Holy Spirit, started speaking in tongues. Things started dropping off my life. Far from perfect, st man, I'm lit up like the Holy Ghost. Our guys call it the chicken skin. <laughs> but anyway, um, it, it just, Jesus dominated everything in my life. Even if I wasn't doing right, he was the, at the forefront getting, son, let's, let's not do that, right? So that's what the baptism of the Holy Spirit will do for you. Hmm. So worship team, will you come? As they begin to play, the Lord had me add this scripture this morning. It's Matthew 25, 31 through 46. It says, but when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit upon his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered in his presence, and he will separate the people as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me into your home. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you cared for me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then these righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink, or a stranger and show you hospitality, or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say, I tell you the truth. When you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, when you did it to one of the least of these that you saw in that video, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. But then that passage continues. 
Then the king will turn to those on the left and say, Away with you, you cursed ones, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his demons. For I was hungry, and you didn't feed me. I was thirsty, and you didn't give me a drink. I was a stranger, and you didn't invite me into your home. I was naked, and you didn't give me clothing. I was sick and in prison, and you didn't visit me. Then they will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and not help you? And he will answer, I tell you the truth, when you refused, when you refused to help the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were refusing to help me. And they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous will go into eternal life. We're not saved by our works, church. I'm not suggesting that. You're saved by grace through faith, right? Not of works, lest any man should boast. But works are evidence that we have been saved, period. There is a lost and a dying world all around, every single one of us. And what we need to lead them into the kingdom is the power of of the Holy Spirit. We could not do what we do without it. We could not see the transformation that we get to see every day without it. I wouldn't have heard his voice like I did right here more than a decade ago without it. He wants to fill you with his power. He wants to use you in great and mighty ways. He wants you to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. They still happen today. It's the best way to love him to love others. So Dave, as we do these prayer stations, um, I'm going to apparently be on the water baptism station with Alexander Elijah, who I have yet to meet, but I'm very much looking forward to that. I just, I pray, church, if you're not saved, take care of that today. If you haven't been water baptized, it's here today. If you need to forgive somebody, come up and confess that. Confess your sins one to another and pray for each other so that you may be healed. If you need the faith to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit today, just ask the Lord to give it to you and be filled with his power to minister to a lost and a dying world. Amen.